It's Sunday and welcome to the 76th edition of the Global Weather and Climate Report. Hope everybody is safe and well and enjoying their weekend so far. Wanted to start off today's video um, by looking at the influence that we're seeing um, within the 500 millibar or 18,000 foot level over the Northern Hemisphere and how it's actually influencing the lower portion of the stratosphere. So we've got, this is at 12Z Monday tomorrow. And we've got a classic negative NAO pattern here where you've got a direct discharge of bitterly cold air driving south over North America, as you can see, and also bitterly cold air driving south into Western Europe here. So we've got that 984 millibar area of low pressure over the central portion of Europe. We've got a very strong high elongated from the central North Atlantic all the way up towards the North Pole here. Then you've got a, almost a mirror image of a 984 millibar low on the south shore of Hudson Bay. So these two features here with that prong of warmth is displacing the colder south over North America and Western Europe here. So you can see actually with the, this is the 500 millibar geopotential anomalies and you've got that strong block over the North Atlantic and Greenland with the trough either side of that. Now, if we look at Amy Butler's tweet here, this is a, a, a an expert on the stratosphere, and uh, Dr. Amy Butler put this tweet out several days ago, indicating that the strong block over the north Atl over the North Atlantic and particularly Greenland towards the sixteenth of January would see the influence propagate up into the lower stratosphere, and you can see the split in the polar vortex. One piece over North America, the other piece over Northern Europe, over the Norwegian Sea. But you can see here this very notable split in the column as you progress up through the troposphere into the lower stratosphere. Now, notice here that there is no influence at 50 millibars and above here. We don't have that split in the upper levels of the stratosphere at 10 millibars, which then indicates that it is very much a bottom up influence now this here could potentially get very close to reversing the mean zonal winds within the stratosphere which would then constitute a major ssw the question would be is this constant pattern of the polar vortex what influence does this have mid and late winter up until now i think the autumn mjo um, has been playing a fantastic role. We're going into the warm phases. We're going to see the pullback towards the, the latter 10 days of, of January here. But I think the, the the autumn and the early portion of the winter, there was an influence of the both the El Nino and the Indian Ocean Dipole. But I think we're starting to hand things off to other properties, other teleconnections and drivers, that being the stratosphere. But it's what influence, as that MJO rotates, out of the the warm phases, sorry, big pardon. Out of the warm phases, and back towards the cold phases, as I've said many many times over the last few weeks, the MJO has been rotating full circle almost. We've seen it happen late November and early December. We've seen it now taking place. Strong phase one that kind of skipped seven and eight, entered phase one two in the three at the moment and then we're going to see the warm phases but i think we're going to rotate back towards phase six seven and eight and it's what influence does that have combined with what's going on within the stratosphere i still think that we've got the worst of winter yes coming up this upcoming week compared to what we've seen so far but i think we're going to see bigger times to come in the, the month of february here that is the forecast that's the prediction i've had all along that will be the test as we move forward here's another visual of that split so you can see here one piece over north america the other piece over northern europe northern eurasia here that's quite a nice de depiction a nice visual of what's going on within the stratosphere so another interesting way to look at it is that this is the GFS Northern Annular Mode Index here. So it represents the blocking within the atmosphere from bottom up. You can see here we've got this strong uh, warming. And then the forecast period takes us towards the middle portion of the month. 
and you've got a tremendous amount of um, blocking right the way up from lower troposphere up into the mid levels of the stratosphere. I think she goes on to say, I think this is pretty cool. The minor SSW we've seen last week. Remember, we've seen some very strong warming taking place. Major disruption of the polar vortex last week. Looks to reinforce and support the upcoming Greenland block, which we've got now over the next week. Uh, so that is another emphasis on what I'm talking about. So what happened last week? What's going on now within the 500 millibar, the strong blocking over Greenland, the influence we're seeing? She goes on to say, I'm, I'm trying to kind of, this is a bit of a, a stratospheric special in the Global Weather Report today because I wanted to hone in on this. I've been me meaning to do this for a few days and I couldn't do it. But this, if this further polar vortex disruption does somehow eke out into a major SSW, I may be slightly annoyed because it seems to originate from being pulled apart from below, i.e. the 500 millibar level, and the forecasts at least don't seem to have some of the key dynamics in other SSWs. In other words, it's quite an unusual situation that we're seeing taking place at the moment here. This may come to nothing, by the way, but it may also come to something as well. But you can see the deceleration in the mean zonal winds that was seen the weakening <clears throat> last week didn't uh, reverse the mean zonal winds from uh, west to east to east to west. But you can see here another major disruption taking place in the upcoming work week that gets mighty close to a reversal in the mean zonal winds here. Interesting tweet here by Dr. Matthew Barlow. Another nice visual here of the structure of the polar vortex from troposphere up to the top of the stratosphere. You can see the clear split in the PV within the low levels and the, the displacement of the PV up at 10 millibars here, but it still remains relatively intact. Here's a tweet here by Marco Patagna of the Met Office. The mean zone of winds, this is the projection of the ECNWF. You can see here that it gets mighty close to the zero line. That zero line represents the zonal winds uh, of a neutral level. Once it drops below the zero, it goes in the reverse, uh, and you reverse the winds within the mean zonal uh, uh, situation here. So for those that are struggling to get their head around what the heck I'm talking about, I do apologize for that. I have a few comments recently saying that I'm, I'm being too technical. It's trying to get the happy medium between too technical, but also for folks that want to understand what's going on. To back up what's been talked about here with regards to the stratosphere, the weakening, the constant barrage of warming, displacing, weakening the vortex, the, 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 three, the 3CS, this is the, the, the Met Office model here for the month of February, really backs up what's going on within the stratosphere, the MJO rotating through warm and cold phases. Uh, if we do get a major SSW, or even if we get close to it, I think the continuous pressure that's been put in the vortex looks as if it may try to come out some way, shape or form. And the models really since the back end of autumn has been backing up the idea that we increase the strength of blocking the North Atlantic block at that as we progress through the winter season, least so in December as forecast. Then we see some in January. Then we see that a peak in February and March. And you can see here that the model is indicating a very strong negative NAO signal, which would then respond to a potentially very cold February. Not a guarantee. But this 500 millibar height and only chart would be something right out of February 2010 and would have the potential at least to deliver some major cold to both Europe and North America if this was to materialize. But I think the models are seeing what's going on within the, the tropospheric polar vortex and the stratospheric polar vortex as well and responding to a very strong negative NAO signal here which I think is rather interesting and a backup of what's been uh, talked about with regards to the stratosphere. CFSV2, this is the month of February, 500 millibar geopotential heights, negative NEO February looks to be the case. Cold trough over Eastern North America and cold trough over Western Europe block in between. So it's backing up what the UK MET model is showing for the month of February. Let's look and see what's going on 
around the world, of course. It is the global weather and climate, after all. So, the first half of January looks like this globally. We have got some very cold conditions across the western side of North America. You could almost draw a line down the spine of North America. We are starting to see the turnaround take place after one of the warmest Decembers on record for the United States. And North America overall, we are seeing a massive turnaround taking place. And we'll look at that in just a second here. Look at the look at Europe and, and northern Eurasia here. Now we do have cold and average conditions across the UK and Ireland, which is interesting. A turnaround from the front run in four days. We do have some very cold uh, warm conditions across Greenland. We had coastal areas of Greenland uh, plus 11 Celsius. We've got some very cold conditions across far eastern Russia, but the central portion of Europe, uh, Eurasia is warmer than average or, or, or really Asia, if, if you will. We've got some very warm conditions across parts of eastern China, Mongolia, into Kazakhstan. Some ridiculous warm conditions, even plus 10 Celsius at nighttime over parts of southern Siberia, which is pretty remarkable stuff. Warmer than average across the bulk of Australia, cooler than average across the far east and west coast. Warmer than average across Southeast Asia, where we've had some very, very warm nights in uh, Myanmar, Thailand, Laos, uh, Philippines. We've had temperatures uh, record breaking levels here for nighttime at this time of year. Remember, it's winter in parts of this uh, region of the world as well. Warmer than average across the bulk of Brazil here. We continue to hold on. The cold and average conditions reflective of an El Nino in central and northern portions of Argentina. Let's look at uh, Europe specifically for the first half of January. And we've got a very, very cold start of the year in western Russia, Scandinavia. We've had a bit of a pullback, of course, across Scandinavia, thanks to milder conditions running around the top of that high. We've got a cold and average UK and Ireland. That's going to increase in strength over the next seven days. As you already know, cold and average across the bulk of Iberia, France. And I think the central swathe of Europe is going to turn increasingly colder. Uh, Southeastern Europe still warmer than average, as you can see. So our friend Jim Yang, based in Amoy in China, put out this tweet interestingly yesterday. This is the scene in Hemu in China where we've had continuous snowfall for a week. And this is 1.6 meters of snow in this part of China. Some remarkable scenes. That's a horse, by the way. And look at the height of the snow. So pretty amazing stuff, actually, when you look at that. So our friend Terry Goose yesterday put out a tweet, I think it was actually the day before, temperatures as low as minus 48.6 Celsius, which is the coldest temperature in Alberta in January since 2004, when we've seen a minus 52 Celsius wind chills in Manning, Alberta, minus 59 Celsius. We had a temperature of minus 45.9 at Edmonton Airport, which was the coldest since December 2009. But I think we did record actually a colder temperature than that still in uh, Edmonton here. Vancouver had a cold temperature, uh, coldest January temperature since 1993, but there was a colder temperature in December 2021 of minus 15.3. Coldest temperature in Canada so far a few days ago was recorded at Ogilvy Camp, I think that is, in Yukon, uh, minus 49.3 Celsius. Now, over the course of this weekend, we may achieve a minus 50 somewhere in Alberta or Saskatchewan. Meanwhile, we've seen the first minus 40s in parts of the United States up in Montana over the last day or so as well. Now, look at this here. Oimicon, we did have, there is a traditional uh, marathon that took place, a 42-kilometer race held in Oimicon, Yakutia, the coldest part of the world inhabited part of the world on, on, uh, and, and the temperature of minus 54.9 celsius was achieved now this is remarkable stuff check this out here could you imagine a marathon in minus 55 celsius weather well the russians do it in a pretty dramatic way 
that's it for today thanks for watching like share and subscribe and i'll see you again tomorrow with more bye for now